And now I got to go back and find my slides. Okay, can you guys uh, see my uh, slides? Yes. Okay, and let me just get rid of this here. Is there anybody else uh, participant wise that wants to record? You're welcome to, I'm also recording. It'll be on the channel at some point, so. All right, so by way of review, I don't know how many of you were with us uh, last Wednesday. Uh, we went through the most testable of the seven option strategies. Now in your series seven, the only subject area that really uh, is dependent on understanding the previous discussion is options. What I mean by that, in most Series 7 subject areas, if you don't get something, it doesn't matter because, you know, 10 minutes later, it'll be a completely new subject. But in options, you got to lay the base. You know, you got to uh, get pretty good at contract specifications. What I mean by that is when you look at a long call, you know, it's a choice to buy the stock. When you look at a short put, you know, it's an obligation to buy the stock. Those contract specifications will never change. Now, as you see in this slide, I've organized it a little differently. And what I mean by that is I have on one side, the left-hand side, speculative option positions. And what's important about that, it means is we don't have the stock. We might end up with the stock, but initially we do not have the stock. And you know, those are stock plus options, we actually have the stock. So we're gonna to talk tonight about multiple option strategies. We're gonna talk about straddles, Straddles with different strike prices are called combinations. You wouldn't do anything differently. I'm going to show you that. And we're going to spend a lot of time, most of our time on spreads. And there's eight things you need to be able to do on a spread. And I'm going to show you all of those eight things. Now, everybody does options a little different. Uh, I uh, don't know if this is the first time you've seen the options matrix, but I don't call this a box with four squares. You know, what I suggest you do is when you get in the exam site or when you're studying, Take a sheet of paper and fold it in fours. And then in each quadrant, kind of write what's going on. You know, if you can just do the long call quadrant, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Now, if I say, what well, can you tell me about a long call? You say, well, Dean, when you're long a call, you paid a premium. You have a choice to buy the stock. You're bullish. Your max gain is unlimited. Max loss is the premium. Break even a strike price plus premium. You may not have any clue what you just said but it is technically correct, uh, you know, short call. Now there's some things about that short call that is definitely testable. You know, one thing you definitely need to know about a short call is it exposes a customer to unlimited risk. So the first spread I'm gonna show you is how do we offset the risk in a short call, which is unlimited. You know, if I'm right, the stock is uh, strike price or low, it expires. I keep the premium neener, neener, neener. But what I might want to consider doing, and I'm going to show this to you first, is taking part of my premium by a higher strike, just in case. So I'm going to show you that. Uh, long put, puts the ones that throw people for a loop. And in the matrix, you say, Dean, I say, what's a long put? You say, Dean, you paid the premium. You have a choice to sell the stock at the strike price. XP means strike price. You're bearish. Your max gain is break even to zero. Max loss of the premium. Uh, break even strike price plus premium. You might not have any clue what you just said, but it is technically correct. It is technically correct. Short put, you're the putty. I left the doorbell open so people can you know, get in. Anyway, she said, receive the premium, obligated to buy the stock at the right price, you're bullish. Max gain is the premium, max loss is break even to zero. Those are our four basic option positions by way of review. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to be doing a spread. And there's eight things you got to be able to do in a spread. And what I'm going to be showing you this evening is those eight things that we have to be able to do that. But before I do that, I do want to show you the basic option strategy. So as we said, this is very, very foolish. So if I short 10 Apple June 150 calls, please mute yourself, Tracy. I'll mute you for you. Unless you have something that, uh, you know, a uh, questioner, you're welcome to unmute and ask questions, but uh, otherwise try and pay attention to muting because I don't have to mute everybody. I don't have to. All right, so what I suggest you do, this is a basic option strategy. And again, it's a buffet, take what you like, leave what you don't. But I'm hoping that at some point you can look at this pretty quickly and say, this is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. 
And gee, I'm going to get uh, $12,000, right? 12 points on 10 contracts, each governing 100 shares. And that's way, you know, and if the stock is 150 or lower, if the stock is 150 or lower, the contracts expire and I get to keep the money. And even if the uh, stock goes up, I can sustain a little bit of an upward move, right? There's my break even of 162. But the problem in this position is that once it goes past 162, I start to lose money. And boy, how much money could I lose? I could lose unlimited sums of money. So that's not going to be very bright. So what I'm about to do is leg into a spread. Now, I'll tell you what point is testable. The conversation I'm having with you is not testable. I will tell you when the conversation becomes testable and ask you to make a note on those test issues. This, what's testable here is to know that this has unlimited risk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my money, some of my 12 points, and I'm going to buy a higher strike put or higher strike call just in case. So what we're about to do is we're about to leg into a spread. The first test question is, can you identify a spread? A spread is long and short, the same type of contract. Long and short, the same type of contract. There's two types of contracts, calls and puts. You can either buy them or sell them. So we have four basic positions. So you should be prepared on the exam to tell me that a spread is long and short, the same type of contract. Meaning if I'm gonna turn this into a spread, which I just told you I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to go long some calls because that's what a spread is. What we're spreading is the difference in the premiums, the difference in the premiums. Now, once we identify the spread, I'm gonna turn this into a spread. The next thing we wanna be able to do is determine whether it's a credit or debit spread. Do we have more money in than out credit spread or debit, more money out than in? Once we do this, we're gonna do this four different times. Once we do this, we can rock and roll because if we collect money, the best case is contracts expire, we keep the money. We go neener, neener, neener. We'll be right every time. And if it's credit expire, we know it's going to be narrow. That goes together all the time. That's the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it because I just told you it goes together all the time. And there's a lot of different ways to remember that. You can remember credit has six letters, expire has six letters, narrow has six letters. So that's really we can rock and roll and we'll have our game. So that's really, really kind of gonna be key. Now, if on the other hand, we determine it's a debit, Mountain Dew, like Mountain Dew, do the do, or like Nike, just do it, D-E-W, debit exercise widen. Again, if we determine we have more money out than in, it's a debit spread. And we want to be able to exercise the contracts. I'm gonna show this to you at length. And we want the difference in premiums to get larger, widen. You know, like Dean, I'm wide. I need to exercise, right? When you're wide, you need to exercise. And a common theme, whenever you have money out, you should know that's your loss. So we're going to do these eight things on these spreads. We have to be able to do break even. And then we have to determine bullish or bearish. And I got a trick there as well as showing that to you. All right. So let's leg in to our first spread. Let's leg in to our first spread. We said that this was foolish because that is a naked call. That is a naked, uncovered call. And we said that is very, very foolish. So what I'm going to do is some construction. I'm going to do some construction and I'm going to put in a ceiling at 165. You know, I like to think of options as being about floors and ceilings. Now, one thing I recommend you do, again, buffet, take what you like, leave what you don't. One thing I recommend you do is you buy each leg, take this out of your, you know, your official uh, test you know, that you're taking and put it on your scratch paper to make your analysis, right? So when they say your customer goes short, 10 Apple June 150 calls at 12 and goes long, 10 Apple June 165 calls at three. When Apple's at, who cares? It doesn't matter where Apple's at. What I would suggest is we put that under our official Prometric scratch paper and underneath say, okay, what are we looking at? We're looking at an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. XP is just notation for strike price. 
And we said that that's kind of foolish because if that's all you do, we said the problem with that is you're going to have unlimited risk. And so we did, being the smart people we are, we said, okay, let's establish a choice to buy the stock to offset our obligation to sell. So that's a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. Okay, so the first thing we have to be able to do on a spread is we have to be able to identify it. Now, even if that wasn't a test question, I just told you it is. But even if it wasn't, if you can't identify the spread, you don't know what to do next, right? So a spread is long and short, the same type of contract. So chat is open. Does this meet the definition of a spread? Yes or no, does this meet the definition of a spread? It certainly does. And what we're spreading is the difference in the premiums. Now, this next thing is going to be really key. So the second test question after we've identified it, you know, I told you that's a test question to identify it. By the way, even if that wasn't a test question, I told you this, if you can't identify it, you're just going to be staring at it and go, I don't know, right? So you got to identify it. The next thing, and this is key, was we have to determine debit or credit. We got to determine, do we have more money out than in debit, or do we have more money in than out? And what we're spreading is the difference in the premium. So what we're going to do is we're going to net the premiums. We're going to net the premium. So is that 12, is that 12 dollars out or dollars in? Is that 12 dollars out or dollars in? When you short an option, that's going to be dollars in, right? And how about that three? Is that dollars out? Or is that dollars in when you buy an option? That's dollars out. And so we're gonna net those two numbers to establish whether we have a debit or a credit. As we said, this is pretty damn important because a lot of the analysis is going to flow from whether this is a debit or credit. By the way, what we're spreading is the difference in the premiums. Right, that's what the spread is. When we say, what's the spread? It's like, you know, betting on a, a ball game, right? You know, my buddies like to bet. I say, what's the spread tonight? What's the difference supposed to be? Here, the spread now is, again, I suggest you do things on a per share basis. So I'm not going to put 3,000 here. I'm not going to put 12,000 here. I'm going to recommend you do things on a per share basis. Okay, so test question number two. We've identified test question number one. This is a spread. Test question number two, is this a debit? or a credit spread? Is this a debit or a credit spread? This is a credit spread. And it's a credit spread because we got more money in than out. And a credit is when you have more money in than out. Uh, P.S. Some people, some people like to use pluses and minuses, that's fine. You know, if you wanted, you could put uh, a minus three and a plus 12 for a plus nine. But ultimately, the test point is that this is a net credit. This is a net credit. We got more money in than out. You know, all the option strategies not testable. All the option strategies. You're either buying volatility or you're selling volatility. So uh, we said that once we get credit, we can rock and roll. Now, stay menu driven. Once you get the menu done, then you can think about things. But I highly recommend you don't think about things until you get the menu or the process done. So this is a credit spread. We said the next thing we want to be able to do is determine whether we want the contracts to expire or exercise. So if this is the position in your account, if this is the position in your account, you know, I'll just make a T here. I'm going to track monies in and out. Uh, T is how we track uh, money in and out. Again, you can do it any way you want. But I always think of it as saying, you know, uh, you know, money in and out. Let's see. You know, people, you know. In retro. Anyways, uh, let's go for, I'm going to use uh, here, I'm going to put uh, minus sign, debit, you know, whatever floats your boat. Let's make that smaller. And, you know, we could call that a debit if we'd like. Let me do that even smaller still. 
And uh, I'll put that as a debit because that's a debit money out of uh, three there. And then some people like to use a minus sign again. As I said, whatever kind of floats your boat. Be careful of getting too many voices in your head. So, you know, you, you know, there's some people do it differently than me. And it takes me a while to kind of catch up to them. Uh, I like to label things. Whenever you have a lot of things going on, I highly recommend you label things. You know, you should think of when you're doing, you know, your mechanics, can another thinking person look at your scratch paper and figure out what's going on? And so that 165 call is going to be three out. And again, I suggest that you do this on a per share basis. And then when we're all done, we can, you know, go figure out what the answer is. All right. Well, whoa, gee, what else do we got going on here? We got a 150 call. So let's put that there. And uh, let's put that in black. And that's going to be money in. By the way, the more time you spend on your setup, uh, the better you're going to, you're better you're going to be in terms of solving things. The other thing about having a process is if you have a process, you know, you'll probably catch yourself making mistakes. Okay. So this is the position in your account. And I call you, I'm your broker, and I say, these contracts expired. These contract expired. Would you be happy or would you be sad if I called you and said, these contracts expired? Happy or sad? They expire worthless. You are happy or sad if they expire worthless. Because remember, if the stock is 150 or lower, this is Apple we're looking at. And if Apple is 150 or lower, that's our floor, right? No intrinsic value contracts expire worthless. Yeah, I'd be happy, right? And the fact, I would be able to keep the money. That would be my max gain. Anytime you collect money, the best case is you get to keep it, right? You agree to be a potential victim and nobody victimizes you. And you go, neener, neener, neener. You know, so in a credit spread, your max gain is what you've collected. Now, I kind of think you're a jerk of a customer if you say, hey, Dean, had I done the naked calls, I would have made 12 points instead of nine. I said, well, yeah, but you would have been taking all kinds of risk. And so you'd definitely be happy. Now, the hardest part to get, and you don't need to get it, is do you want the difference in the premiums to narrow or widen? Do we want the difference to be a smaller number or do we want it to be a larger number? And as I said, you don't need to get it because credit, expire, narrow, go together all the time. Now, I'm going to illustrate that to you, uh, but you don't need to know that because it's just a recognition thing based on, you know, what's going on with the difference in the premiums. So let me show that to you uh, quickly. So uh, when we open this thing up, right, here's our opening. We had a minus three to me minus three and we had a plus 12. So when we opened it up, the difference in the premiums was nine. So that's our net premium there. And let's just label that again. This is not something you have to be prepared to do on the test. I'm just showing you the concept of widen and narrow. That's the difference between the two. And that's when we open it. And so now let's see, we close it. So I just told you we need the difference in the premiums to be smaller. And so we close this, for example, and the difference is smaller than nine, we're gonna have money left over. Again, what I'm doing here is not testable. I'm just showing you that indeed narrow. So let's say uh, I say at uh, several weeks later, you can close out the spread for a net difference of, or I say uh, apples at 153, apples at 153 and you close out for intrinsic value. You close out for intrinsic value, right? The 165 has no intrinsic value. Uh, the 153 has three points of intrinsic value. Please note the difference in the premiums, the difference in the premiums narrowed from nine to three. And so I made six. By the way, you could look here and say, okay, there I lost three. I paid uh, three for that. I didn't need it. And uh, here I made nine. I'm just netting that out. And another way to say that, if I net those out, is I made six. That is the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it because credit expire narrow goes together all the time. 
How often does it go together? All the time. All right, so we're working our eight testable items on a spread. We're working our eight testable items on a spread. And so far, we did our first test question was, can we identify the spread? We identified it as a spread. The next thing we had to be able to do on the test is determine debit or credit. We determined credit. The next thing on the test we got to be able to do is expire narrow, goes together all the time. And whenever we collect money, the best case is we keep it. So now the next thing we got to be able to do is the loss. Now, all of the action takes place between the strikes. It's all about the floor and the ceiling. So, you know, here I put in a ceiling, being the smart bear I am, I put in a ceiling here. I offset my obligation to sell at 150 with a choice to buy at 165. So all of the action takes place between the floor and the ceiling. Again, that's not testable, but what you should know is that all the action is between these two numbers. That's the whole point of doing a spread. Is I'm saying I want to play between 165 and 150, and then I don't want to play no more. Now, test taking trick. The gain and the loss in a spread, the gain and the loss in a spread always equals the difference in the strikes. The gain and the loss in a spread always equals the difference in the strikes. You know, that's why we're doing the spread. The reason we're doing the spread is because we only wanna play between those two numbers. So you would be bad form as a test taker to tell me that the gain and the loss here is something other than two numbers that add up to 15. So that's gonna be two numbers that add up to 15. Now in the two numbers that add up to 15, we already have one of those numbers. Again, stay menu driven, stay menu driven. But we're looking for the max loss of the spread. Now, remember before we turn this into a spread, the max loss was unlimited. And we said that was not a very smart, bearish thing to do to have unlimited loss potential. Okay, so nine plus something, nine plus something equals 15. Nine plus something equals 15. What is, what is that something? What is that something? Nine plus something equals 15, yeah. It's six. Now, if you don't get that, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't get that, ugh, ugh. If you don't get that, then you're gonna have to memorize that the maximum loss of the credit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that credit. I just think that's a mental mess personally. I think it's easier to say there's 15 points to be made or lost. I collected nine so I can lose six. Now, after you get it done, the menu, then you can think about it. The worst case here is I'm gonna buy the stock at 165. I'm gonna deliver it at 150. I'm gonna lose 15 points. Nine is already in my account, I lose six. All right, so the next thing we got to be able to do, the next thing we've got to be able to do is break even. Now, again, test taking trick. The break even has got to be some number within the range. What I mean by that is the break even is some number between 150 and 165. The break even is somewhere between those two numbers. So, again, as a test taker, it'd be bad form to give me on your answer set, right? You shop your answer set and it's a number that's uh, 166 or 149. You can toss out those two and that gives you a 50-50. It's gotta be some number that's between these two numbers. All right, so before we turn this into a credit call spread, it was a naked call. It is a naked call. Our break even was 150 plus 12. Our break even was 162 before we legged into the spread. But now we don't have a 12 point cushion, right? It's not gonna be 150 plus 12 because we don't have 12. We don't have 12. How much do we have? How much do we have? We don't have 12, how much do we have in our account right now? Yeah, and so we're gonna use that nine, the net premium. Now, a good way to remember this is Cal. 
And that stands for call add to the lower. If you only remember one thing about options, call up, put down, call up, put down. So we're gonna take our lower strike, call add to the lower, and we're gonna add the net premium to the lower strike. So call, whoa, add to the lower. Now, as we mentioned, it would be bad form to, to give me any number that isn't somewhere between these. So we're gonna take 150, our lower strike, doesn't matter whether it's a credit or debit call spread, doesn't matter. Does not matter if it's a credit or debit. We're gonna take our lower strike, which is 150. We're gonna add our net premium, which in this case is nine. And we get our break even of 159. So that's not bueno because you know it was 162, but now we don't have a, a 12 point cushion. We have a nine point cushion. So here's our break even at 159. Remember all the action takes place between the strikes. All the action takes place between the strikes. So there's our 159 is our break even. And if we're uh, looking at this, if we're looking at this in terms of uh, making money, we said that uh, we have nine points here that we can make. Uh, give me a bigger. So here's our game in between here. And here's our loss. Right, if we look at this, here was our plus nine. And here is our minus six, right? I'm absolute value. I'm gonna worry about absolute value, but all the action takes place between the strikes. Now, the last thing we gotta be able to do, and then we're gonna run it all back, is we have to determine bullish or bearish. And how do we determine bullish or bearish? The way we determine bullish or bearish is the larger premium dominates the position. The larger premium dominates the position. That's a short call, and so this is bearish. And that's the last thing you gotta be able to tell me. And the reason that's important is because we need to know where we want Apple to be in relationship to that break even. We want it below that. Now, I'll just illustrate to you that indeed that's correct. You know, if we buy the Apple 159, we deliver at 150, we lose nine points. We got nine points, we break even. All right, so let's run it back. The nine things you're held accountable for on a spread is can you identify the spread? Can you determine credit or debit? Can you determine expire or exercise? Narrow or widen? And then remember, we said that the credit, uh, the uh, gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes, right? So in our example, the difference in the strikes was 15. And we had collected, as you recall, uh, nine points. And so if we collected nine, we know that the uh, loss is going to be the missing number. Now, as I mentioned, I think it's kind of a mental mess if you don't get that, because then you're going to have to memorize you know, that the maximum loss and the credit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that's credit. I just think that's a mental mess. Whatever those two numbers are, they're going to add up to that. You know, if you're kind of trying to figure out where we're going, we're going to be doing a debit spread as well. And then we use Cal to get our break even. And then we determined that it was a bearer spread because the larger premium dominates. Now we have a memory aid device that we can use for this called BULLS. And that stands for because you're long the lower strike. You know, we're not long the door strike, and so we're not a bull. I'll show that to you as we progress. All right, so let's do it again. Let's just clear this up. Let's go back, and let's do the eight things we're required to do on a spread or held accountable to know on a spread. So here's our spread. First thing is, can you tell me that's a spread? Can you identify it? The next thing we got to be able to do is determine debit or credit. 
Uh, by the way, even if it was missing the premiums, even if it was missing the premiums, you should know that a 150 call is going to have a greater premium. Lower strike call contracts always have greater premiums. You know, a choice to buy Apple at a lower price is more desirable than a choice to buy at a higher price. I know that I'm going to charge accordingly if I'm the seller, right? So that 150 is going to be the greater premium. So I can determine whether this is a debit or credit, determining on whether I bought the 150 calls or I sold them. Okay, so uh, we got to be able to determine debit or credit. We're going to net the premiums. So is that 12 money out or money in? Is the 12 money out or money in? That's money in. Is the three money out or money in? That's money in. I'm just resetting. So this is a credit spread. Now, once we get the credit spread, we can rock and roll, right? Because once we know credit, we say expire or exercise. If it's a credit spread, do we want the premiums, the contracts, do we want the contracts to expire or exercise if it's a credit spread? You're correct. You'll be correct every time. Do you want the difference in the premiums to widen or narrow? Do you want the difference in the premiums to get bigger or smaller? Narrow. You'll be right every time. The max gain and the max loss, the max gain and the max loss equal what two numbers? The max gain and the max loss equal what two numbers? All the action takes place between the strikes. That's the whole point here is there's only 15 points to be made or lost. Remember, because you were a smart person, you said, listen, I only want to play between 150 and 165, and then I don't want to play no more. Not testable, but I think of this as a floor and a ceiling. There's a ceiling at 165. So we get credit, expire, narrow. The max gain and max loss equals 15. Now, if you don't get that, then I told you, boy, life is miserable. Right? Because if you don't get that, then you're going to have to memorize that the maximum loss in a credit spread is the difference in the strikes minus the net credit. I just think it's easier to say, okay, well, here's my gain. And that gain, that max gain, by the way, it'd be $9,000 because it's 10 contracts. But as I said, I recommend you do things on a per share basis. And that would be my loss. It'd be bad form on the test to give me any two numbers that don't add up to this. So if you shop your answer set and they say, what's the max gain, max loss, you better not take seven and seven or you know nine and seven or three and eight. It's gotta be two numbers that add up to this. That alone will get you a 50-50 on your exam. So uh, we've got our max gain, max loss, break even. Again, break even, you should know, test taking trick is gotta be between 150 and 165. So again, test taking trade, you can shop in the answer set and anything that isn't between those two numbers, you're gonna to toss out. Now a good mnemonic device to remember how to do break even and call spreads is call, cow, call, add to the lower. So we're gonna take our lower strike. You know, the lower strike is always the dominant leg. We're gonna add our net premium. In this case, our net premium was a credit of nine. And we're going to get our break even of 159. Stay menu driven. Don't, you know, don't start doing stuff until you get the menu down. Because if you get the menu down, whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. Right. So the break even is 159. The last thing we got to do is determine. Is it a bullish or a bearish spread? Is it a bullish or a, bear, a bearish spread? The way we do that is 
the greater premium dominates. The greater premium dominates. And so this is a bearish bet. All right, so let's do another one. Let's do another one. Okay, we're reviewing, we're reviewing our basic option positions. And what we're doing is taking our base leg, our base leg, and we're turning it into a spread. So, you know, here's our basic option positions again. And so we just looked at uh, why a short call was very foolish. And we used that short call and took part of our premium from the short call to buy the higher strike call just in case. And what we did was a credit call spread. Now in a short put, man, in a short put, I'm obligated to buy the stock and the stock might go all the way to zero. And so you, I think to myself, gee whiz, you know, this sounds kind of foolish. You know, in this situation, again, this is a basic option position and I'm obligated to buy a thousand shares at 150. We do things on a per share basis, but that's 13 grand. You know, beats working for a living. I'd rather sell the Apple 150 puts for 13 grand, 10 of them, than teach a Wednesday evening options class. And then what I'm hoping is that Apple's 150 or higher, the puts expire and I go neener, neener, neener. I get to keep the money. You know, but what I might want to consider doing, the conversation is not testable. You know, what I might want to consider doing is taking part of my 13 points and buying a lower strike put just in case. Okay, somebody sticks it to me, I can stick it to the next guy. You know, uh, one of the largest losses I ever had a customer take was uh, trading options. And this was my idea, test question, solicited. His name is Mark. I said, hey, Mark, I think the buyout for this company is going through. And a lot of people do not. And uh, right now, there's a lot of premium in the 80 puts. What I'd like to do is sell the 80 puts, and we can get 13 points for the 80 puts. $13,000, the buyout goes through, the puts expire, we keep $13,000. That's exactly what happened. And he loves it. So he calls me. This is his idea. He says, hey, Dean, uh, we can get a lot of money for these 240 puts. He said, Dean, there's 20 points in the 240 puts. If we obligate ourselves to buy 1,000 shares at 240, somebody will give me 20 grand. And I said, well, Mark, I'm just looking at this thing, and I'm thinking the person who's willing to give you 20 grand knows something we don't know because that makes no sense. They're willing to give you 20 grand for a 240 put with a stock at like 260. You know, real people with material non-public information trade the options because of leverage. And is why I said Mark to Mark is why don't we take some of the money for our 240 puts and buy the 220s just in case. And that way, if it blows up and somebody sticks it to us, puts it to us, we can put it to another person. You know, he didn't want to do that. And so he wrote the 240 puts and at expiration, the uh, stock was 120. So he had to pay 240 grand for $120,000 worth of stock. And when I called him, I said, man, you know, that hurts. He goes, yeah, but I get to keep the 20. I'm like, wow, I will wish I lived in your world. So this is, again, very foolish. So what we're going to do is we're going to take part of our money and we're going to buy a lower strike put. Test question number one is, can you identify a spread? A spread is when you're long and short the same type of contract. So you should be able to tell me on the exam that if I'm going to turn this into a spread, I'm going to have to go long some puts because that's what a spread is. So now, again, we're going to turn into a spread. And the eight things we got to be able to do is identify it as a spread, determine credit or debit, expire or exercise, narrow or widen, gain and loss, break even, bullish or bearish. And so here we go. Here we go again. Boom. Test question number one. Are you looking at a straddle, a combination, a flamingo, a butterfly, a condor, a spread? You are looking at a spread. No, no, we have calendar spreads, Tracy. If the calendar, if it's uh, October and September, that's a calendar spread. And we have, you know, diagonal spreads. So the vast majority of the questions are going to be on vertical or price spreads. And that's what I'm showing you. But I have entire carve outs on those other types of spreads in the YouTube channel. But the vast majority of your questions on the exam are going to be vertical price spreads, where the thing that is different is the strikes. Okay, so is that 13? 
money out or money in. Is that 13? Money out or money in? Is the 13 money out or money in? That is money in. Money in. Because this is a key piece of the analysis. Is that uh, two points money out or money in? That's money out. Now, again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is a pretty a smart uh, person here because this person has an obligation to buy Apple at 150. This is an obligation to buy the stock at the strike price. And, you know, this person is pretty smart because they say, you know what? You know, just in case, I think I'll take part of my 13 points and buy myself a lower strike put just in case somebody sticks it to me, I can stick it to the next guy, right? I mean, that's not a bad idea to do some construction. Now, construction costs money, construction costs money. So this is a choice to sell Apple at 135. Okay, so we've identified it as a spread. The next thing we said is really key to our analysis is we have to determine whether this is a debit or a credit spread. Because if we get that right, we can rock and roll. We can rock and roll if we get that right. So is this a debit or is this a credit spread? Debit, remember, means more money out than in. Credit means more money in than out. And remember, we get this right, we can go credit expire narrow, we got our gain. So this is really a key piece of the analysis. Indeed, this is a credit spread. This is a nine point credit spread. That is our net credit net credit, right? If you want, you can even put, if you wanted to, a little plus or minus or whatever you want to do there, but whoop. And we said that's important to get that net credit thing down. All right? Again, if you wanted, you could put pluses and minuses. You could put plus 13, minus two, plus nine. I like to use dollars out, dollars in rather than pluses or minuses. Yeah, I was just seeing if you're paying attention. Isn't that embarrassing to make give it the arithmetic wrong? That is so embarrassing. I'm so terrible at arithmetic. It really sucks. But that's why you want to have a process, right? So you can actually catch yourself. Now, the way I would have caught myself is the numbers wouldn't work, my gain and loss. And so that's the other reason to have a process. If you have a process, you'll be able to catch you. You know, on the YouTube channel, I can't tell you how many times people will send me some nasty gram that I messed up on the arithmetic and they don't give it a like 10 seconds until I catch myself. <laughs> and I'm like, well, give me a break, man. You know, I, I'm going to redeem myself here in a minute. You just haven't given me enough time to redeem myself. <laughs> so that's the other reason to, you know, have a process. Now we don't know which of these eight things are going to ask us. It's going to be one of the eight, but if you have the process, you go through the menu, then you know what, they, whatever they want to know, you've got the answer, right? They say your customer shorts, 10 apples, September 150 puts at 13 goes long 10 apples, September 135 puts it to when Apple's at, who cares? And then they're gonna ask you the things we're working on. Is it a debit spread? Is it a credit spread? You know, what's going on? Now, once we get that this is a credit spread, we said that's pretty cool because now we can rock and roll, right? If it's a credit spread, test question, do we want the uh, contracts to be exercised or do we want the contracts to expire. We want them to expire. We'll be right every time. Now, after you get the menu done, then you can think about it. Don't think about it until you get the menu done. You know, if these are the contracts in your account and I call you and say they expired, you're going to say, woohoo, I agree to be a potential victim. Nobody victimizes me. If we can close this out for less than 11, that's the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it because it goes together all the time. But if we can close it out for a net of seven, we make four. A net of six, we make five. Hardest part to get, don't need to get it because credit expire narrow goes together all the time. Credit has six letters, expire has six letters, narrow has six letters. 
Again, does your client want the difference in the premiums to widen or narrow? And you would say narrow. You know, they might say something like, uh, which of the following would be profitable, right? And you have to come up with what would be profitable. Uh, what does the gain and the loss add up to? What does the gain and the loss add up to in this uh, spread? What does the gain and the loss add up to in this spread? Always, 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 always. It's bad form as a test taker to pick as a gain and loss any two numbers that don't add up to 15. Now, remember, these are 10 contracts. So, you know, when we're all done, we'd multiply. You know, the max gain would be nine points or 11 points, 11,000. So that always equals the difference in the strikes. Now, the reason I said that's so helpful is because if you know that, your life becomes so much easier. Because, you know, if you don't know that, then you're going to have to memorize that the maximum loss in a credit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that credit. I personally just think that's a mental mess. I think it's easier to say, well, whatever these two numbers are, they add up to 15. And I have one of those numbers already. I just think that's easier. You know, but however you get there, you need to get there. So I think even Dean can do this arithmetic, maybe not. <laughs> you know? 11 plus something equals 15. 11 plus something equals 15. What is that something? Again, stay menu driven. You know, don't be thinking about it till you get this done. But once you get that done, then you can start thinking about it and say, okay, well, worst case is uh, somebody sticks the apple to me at 150. I turn around and stick it to the next guy at 135. I lose 15 points. I got 11 in my account. And so that's, you know, I think the way I would think about it, but, you know, stay menu driven because, you know, you don't want to be thinking about it until you got my guarantee, right? Whatever they want to know, you got the uh, answer. Okay, so if you're looking over here, some people are visual, there's no graphing on the test. There is no graphing on the test. But some people are visual people. And if you're a visual person, here's our spread we're working on. And we said the break even is going to be somewhere between 150 and 135. You know, there's a ceiling at uh, 150. And I think of this as my floor. You know, not testable, but I think of it as my floor and my ceiling. There's 15 points to be made or lost here. You know, I collected 11, 150 or higher. The contracts expire and Dean says, neener, neener, neener. Right, and there's my loss. Okay, so the break even is somewhere between 150 and 135. Now we have a mnemonic device to help us remember how to do break-evens in put spreads. And it doesn't matter whether it is a debit or a credit put spread, does not matter. And the way we do it is with the mnemonic, the memory aid push, push. And that stands for put, subtract from the higher. So the way we're gonna get the break-even is we're gonna subtract the net premium from the higher strike. Remember, if you only remember one thing about options, call up, put down. Call up, put down. So we're gonna take our 150, our higher strike, put subtract from the higher. And we're gonna subtract from that our net premium of 11. And I told you, I'm terrible at uh, math, so this time Dean is going to be uh, using my calculator. 150 minus 11 equals 139. Now, we, by the way, it would be bad form as a test taker to take any two numbers that aren't between, as a break even, between 150 and 135, right? So the break even is 139. Once you get the menu done, then you can think about it. 
don't think about it. Take the menu down. You say, okay, well, if somebody sticks it to me at 150 and I uh, uh, sell it for 139, I'd lose 11. I got 11. I break even. I'm just illustrating that indeed that is the break even. Uh, well, I don't think it would always work to go from the floor, but yeah, I mean, but I think it would be a mess of your proposition. You know, as long as you get the right answer, who cares? You know, a lot of people, by the way, can just use a T and, you know, don't need to memorize stuff. But I would highly recommend you stay menu driven. Yeah, I would stay, I would use the ceiling, the lower strike and a call spread and the higher strike and the put spread. I just think it's an easier mechanical thing to do. Now, the last thing we got to do is determine bullish or bearish. And how do we determine whether this is bullish or is this bearish? How do we determine whether it's bullish or bearish. The larger premium dominates the position. The larger premium dominates the position. And so this is a bullish spread. Be careful. A lot of people think credit means bearish. It does not. This is a bullish spread. I want Apple to go up. Now, as I said, you can also use my trick, bulls, because you're long the lower strike. You're long 135. Anytime you're long, the lower strike, you are indeed a bull. Doesn't matter debit or credit or put, it's just a trick. You know, you can amaze your friends. I can tell you in any two seconds what's going on. All right, let's review. So here's our eight things we got to know about a spread. So we said the first thing we got to be able to do on a spread is we have to be able to identify the spread. So that is a spread where long and short, the same type of contract. The next thing we got to be able to do is determine debit or credit. This is really key because if we get this correct, we can rock and roll. So the way we do that is we net the premiums. If we have more money in than out, it's a credit spread. We have more money out than in, it's a debit spread. All right, so we're going to net the premiums. And we discover that this is indeed a net credit of 11. As we said, once we get that, we can rock and roll. Credit expire narrow goes together all the time. You will never be wrong. We said all the action takes place between the floor and the ceiling, between the difference and the strikes. There's only 15 points to be made or lost. And I just think it's easier to say, well, there's 15 points to be made or lost. I collected 11, so I can lose four. Now, if you don't get that, then you're going to have to memorize that the maximum loss in a credit spread is the difference in the strikes, 15, minus the net credit 11 for the max loss of four. I just think personally, that's a mental mess. I think it's easier to look at it and say, there's 15 points to be made or lost. I collected 11. All right, so those are the eight things you've got to be able to do on a spread. So I have so far said to you, let me just tell you, go back here. I have said to you that you don't want to be agree to be a potential victim and not do some risk mitigation. You know, we've said that if you are short a call or short a put and you want to do some risk mitigation, the conversation is not testable. That what you might want to do is turn your short call into a credit call spread. And if you're short the put, you might want to be able, if somebody sticks it to you, to stick it to the next guy. Right? So in a credit spread, what we're doing is mitigating risk by taking some of our premium and buying another option contract. So, you know, if somebody calls it away from me, I can call away from the next guy. Somebody sticks it to me, I can stick it to the next guy. So that's what I've shown you so far. I've shown you credit spreads. I've shown you credit spreads. So if you had to guess what I'm going to show you next, what would you guess I'm going to show you next? A debit spread. Uh, you know, we're either buying volatility or we're selling volatility. So let's look at this position. Uh, I have an obligation or a choice. This is a basic option position. Do I have an obligation or a choice here? Yeah, I have a choice, right? I have a choice. I'm in control of a thousand shares. I'm in control of 1,000 shares of Apple at any time between now and September at 11.59 Eastern time. I'm in control of 1,000 shares, 10 contracts. Each contract runs 100. 
break-ins always per share. I suggest you do multiplication at the very end. Otherwise, your T is going to be a mess. You're going to have thousands of dollars floating in and out. 150 calls at 13. So I'm buying upward volatility. I got to be right about three things here. I got to be right about direction. Am I choosing up or down? Am I a bull or a bear in this basic option position? Am I a bull or a bear in this basic option position? I'm bullish. So I'm saying that Apple is going up. I got to be right about how far up because I got to cover my out-of-pocket cost. You know, if I really wanted to teach you options, I'd make you buy one. And once you were out of pocket, you'd figure out pretty quickly how this works. So I need at least 15 points up, 163. What is my max gain in this position? What is my max gain in this position? It's a basic option position. What is my max gain? Yeah, unlimited, right? Unlimited. What's my max loss in this position? Yeah, the premium. All right, so uh, I don't like the idea that I got to come up with uh, 13 points here, 13 grand. And don't tell anybody, maybe I don't have 13 grand. I mean, you know, I can't buy options on margin. And I don't like that I need 13 points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell a higher strike call, conversations not testable, to lower my out-of-pocket cost. I, I lower my out-of-pocket cost, I have lower risk, and I also have a less of a volatility I'm going to need. Who cares? Conversation is not testable. We're about to turn this into a spread, and that is testable. A spread is when you're long and short, the same type of contract. So if I'm long a call, and I'm going to turn this into a call spread, that means I'm going to have to short a call. So I'm going to turn it into a spread. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to sell a higher strike call to help me pay for my 150s. And so we're about to create a spread. We said that's our first test question is, can we identify a spread? Then we have to determine credit or debit, exercise or expire, wide or narrow, max gain, max loss, bullish or bearish, and break even. Those are the eight things that we've got to be able to do. All right, so here comes our next one. So test question number one, is that a spread? Does that meet the definition of a spread? It certainly does. Right, And so now we're going to net the premiums because that's what we're spreading is the difference in the premiums. So here we go again. So is that seven? Is that money out or money in? That's seven. Is that money out or money in? That is money in. And is that 13 money in or money out? That is money out. Woohoo! I lowered my out of pocket cost. Conversation isn't testable. I lowered my out of pocket cost from 13 to six. Woohoo! That's a lot easier for Apple to go up six than it is for Apple to go up 13. Not testable. What is testable is to tell me this is a spread, right? And this next one is really key because if we get this right, we can rock and roll. If we get this next one right. So is this a debit or is this a credit spread? Is this a debit or a credit spread? You are correct. This is a six point debit spread. A six point, let's get a bigger one for that. By the way, you can use pluses and minuses. I plus seven minus 13, right? Out of pocket. That's a net out of pocket cost of six points. And so, you know, if you're doing these things, stay menu driven. So I'm just going to remind myself what this is. This is a net debit. Net meaning the difference of the premiums. That's what net means is difference, right? Net, you know, what's the net, the difference? Okay. So, we have determined this is a debit spread. Hmm. So, hey, this is a little different. So do we want the contracts to expire or do we exercise? Do we want the contracts to expire or do we want to exercise? Now, stay menu driven, stay menu driven. 
But what you can do, stay menu driven, is you can think, oh, well, let me think about it. Uh, if these contracts get exercised, I'd be buying Apple at 150 and selling Apple at 165. And that sounds bueno. That sounds like I'd be a happy camper, right? If this is the position in my account and my broker calls me and says, Dean, the Apple spread was exercised. I say, oh, that's wonderful. That means I bought the Apple at 150, which I have a choice to do. And I sold the Apple at uh, 165, which I'm obliged to do. You know, options are all about floors and ceilings. Now, by the way, if you need to, I think you should be all the time have a process. And one thing you might want to consider every time you get an option contract is beneath it say, okay, what am I looking at? What I'm looking at here is a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. And that's my floor, as you can see in my little visual there. And this is my obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. Okay, so uh, we've identified it as a spread. We determined it's a debit spread. And we have determined that we want the difference in the premiums to get larger, hardest part to get, don't need to get it because that goes together all the time. So debit exercise Y and you'll be right every time, but we're referring to the difference in the premiums. Right? What I mean by that is if I can close this out for a net of nine, I make three. Net of 10, I make four. So you know, you gotta be able to close this out at a higher price. But again, the hardest part to get, don't need to get it. Okay, so the next thing we gotta do is we gotta determine max gain max loss. What does the max gain and max loss add up to? What does the max gain and the max loss add up to? That's the whole point of a spread. The whole point of a spread is I'm saying I want to play between 150 and 165, and then I don't want to play no more. That's the whole point of a spread. All the action takes place between the floor and the ceiling. Now, this is not bueno that we put in a ceiling. The conversation is not testable, but you know that's not bueno because now I have to give up the stock at 165. You know that's my ceiling, right? So, basically, what I'm saying when I do a spread is I want to play between these two numbers, and then I don't want to play no more. So as we said, all the action in a spread takes place between the strikes. So by the way, what we're saying too is it would be bad form to tell me that the gain and the loss are any two numbers that don't add up to 15. PS, that alone can get you a 50-50 on your exam, right? Because you can simply shop the answer set and toss out anything offered to you that doesn't you know, add up to 15. Now, you should be not be struggling to a certain extent that when you buy options, whether you buy a call, you buy a put, you buy a spread, debit means you're buying, buying a spread, buy a straddle, buy a combination, it's worst case is you lose your money. So it's pretty easy to qualify somebody who wants to buy an option. Is this money you can afford to lose? Now, for everybody, that's a different number, right? I kind of joke, wouldn't it be funny if Vegas was like our business, if you came out to visit me here in Las Vegas and you, know, you went to the casino, if they said, first, you're going to have to Look at this gambling disclosure document, all the bad things that can happen on the casino floor. It's 100 plus pages. Then you're going to have to go see our gambling principal and see if he'll approve you. And he's going to approve you for Keno. Oh, cards and dice way north of where you're at right now. How much are you willing to lose in this particular visit? Now, again, we said if you want to memorize things, you can certainly do that. But if you start memorizing things, ugh. You know, the amount of stuff that you might have to memorize is going to continue to compound. So I think it's easier to say something plus six, something plus six equals 15. You know, however you get there, you know, that's fine. But I just think that's easier than memorizing ugh, that the maximum gain in a debit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that debit. I just think that's a mental mess. I think it's easier to say, okay, well, there's 15 points to be made or lost. I spent six, so that means I can make nine. I just think that's easier. No, but however you get there, you need to get there, right?
if we go back to our menu, if we go back to our menu, right? We said these two numbers, we have one of these numbers already. What we have here is the debit of six. Let me just get out my pen here real quick. So we have this number already, six. We have this number, right? So we know that number has got to be the difference between the two, right? So that's kind of what's going on or excuse me, 15 points. Yeah, that's right on, Megan. That's exactly right. You know, so, you know, if you, so Megan, let me just, you know, so this is what you got to be able to do, Megan. So uh, let's see if there's going to be, you know, what happens with options, lights go on and they go out again. Lights go out and then they go out again. So what Megan just said, Dean, anytime I'm looking at a spread, you know, that's going to be 15 in this example. The answer is yes. And then when Megan, what you got to do, as we said, is now you got to be a little careful because now you got to determine which one is the gain or the loss. So Megan, if it's a credit spread, we've got our gain. It's the credit. And if it's a debit spread, we've got our loss. It's the debit. So if you can get one of those numbers, you're absolutely right. Megan said debit or credit will either be the max gain or loss. That's exactly right. So if you're selling the spread, it's going to be your max gain credit spread. And if you're buying the spread debit, it's going to be your max loss. That's exactly correct. All right. So good question. Good, uh, good input. All right. So where are we at in our eight testable items on the spread? We've identified it as a spread. We've determined that it's debit exercise widen. We've got our max gain and our max loss. So the next thing we got to do is bullish or bearish. So are we going to use cow or push? Cow or push for our break-in? Are we going to use call, add to the lower? Or are we going to use put, subtract from the higher? So we're going to use cow or push. Cow or push. We're going to use push. Push. And remember what that means? Or excuse me, Cal, what is Dean thinking? I'm just testing to see if you're paying attention. This is a call spread, so we're going to use a call add to the lower. So we're going to take our lower strike, which is 150. We're going to add our net premium, which is six. And we're going to come up with our break even of 156. Uh, by the way, it's a lot easier for Apple to go up six points than it is for Apple to go up uh, 13 points. That's the whole point, by the way, not testable. But what I've done is lower my out-of-pocket cost and by doing so, lower the amount of volatility that I need to uh, break even. So I'm gonna do call, add to the lower. Doesn't matter whether it's a debit or credit. In this case, it's a debit, doesn't matter. And I get my 150 plus six and I get my break even 156. So there's our break even. Clean up here, let's clean, uh, clean up on aisle 11. All right, so we also know by the way, right? We know that the break even has gotta be a number that is between these two numbers, All right? We know it's gotta be a number that's between those two. I mean, that's the whole point of the spread. Yeah, we're not at larger premium dominates. We're, that's our last thing. We haven't done that yet. We're doing our menu. We've identified the spread. We've determined it's a debit spread, debit exercise widen. We've determined max gain, max loss. Where we're at now is the break even. And we've determined the break even is 156. So let's put it there. We said as a test taker, you can, uh, as a test taker, you can eliminate any break even offered to you that isn't between the range. Right, so it'd be bad form on the test. You get a 50-50. It can't be a number above 165 or below 150. Now that's our break even because we got to cover our out-of-pocket costs. Our out-of-pocket cost here is six. 
then once we cover out-of-pocket costs, then we can start to make some money. The gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. Now, the bullish or bearish, how do we do that? Bullish or bearish are determined by the larger premium. So if we look at our premiums here, and we're trying to find what sandbox are we playing in, it's always going to be the greater premium, which is a long call. And so long calls are bullish. And so what we mean by that is you need the apple to go above 156. This is a bullish spread. It's a bullish spread. If it goes above that, we're happy. If it's below that, we're going to be sad. So bullish or bearish is determined by the larger premium. Now, remember, you can also use my trick. Remember my trick? The trick is bulls. Do you remember the bulls trick? Because you're long the lower strike. The lower strike here is 150. Anytime you're long the lower strike, you are bullish. So that's just a trick, but it works every time. All right, so what we did on this spread, we did our eight things. Our eight things were, can you identify the spread? Can we determine credit or debit? Expire or exercise widen or narrow? Here we determine debit, exercise, widen, do the do. We said that always goes together. Whoops, sorry, what happened here? Sorry, it looks like my thing's being a little uh, nitpicky here. We determined our debit was a uh, six. I was out of pocket, that's our loss. That was your point, Megan, right? We're gonna either have the easiest number to get to, I think here, in terms of our menu, is knowing that in a credit spread, there's our gain, and in a debit spread, there's our loss, right? And whatever those numbers are, they're gonna equal the difference in the strikes. And then we're gonna use Cal or push for the break even, and bullish or bearish is determined by the larger premium. So, you know, it's always gonna be the lower strike call that's dominant, because lower strike call contracts always have greater premiums. For example, let me just give this to you. If we're looking at, This spread, if I'm looking at that spread, remember if I turned it into a spread, that's what it looked like before I turned it into a spread. That's a choice to buy Apple at 150. So if I wanted to buy Apple at 145, it's gonna cost me more money. If I wanna buy Apple at 155, it would cost me less money. I think you said I use difference in the strikes minus the net debit twice. Well, uh, the difference in the strikes minus the debt debit once, <laughs> is the uh, max gain. <laughs> so, all right, let's try another one. Let's try another one. All right, so that's just a put. That's a choice to sell Apple at 150. And if that's all I do, and my bullish or bearish, if I just buy a 150 put, no on the menu, let's see. Uh, Juan says on the menu. Uh, I don't know where you're looking on the menu where I got net debit twice. I've got a column that says we're either going to be this was Megan's point. So uh, let me just clean this up real quick. And maybe uh, you are correct and you found a typo, but uh, what uh, we're saying here is that we're either going to go down this path, if it's a credit spread, or we're going to go down this path as if a debit spread. So if it's a debit spread, the maximum loss is the net debit, and the gain is the difference in the strikes. So I don't know one where you think I've said that twice. I don't think I've said that twice. I'm just organizing it that way. Okay, well, onward and upward. Uh, by the way, you can tell me on the timestamp or whatever it is. Anybody else think there's a mistake in that menu? I don't think so. Now, by the way, that's why you want to overlearn things so that even if you know you think there's a some kind of a problem. All right, well, let's uh, go on to our next one. So my question for you, my question for you, is what are you looking at here? Are you looking at a bullish or bearish position? Is that a bullish or bearish position? That's just a basic option position. That is bearish. That is a bearish position. What is your maximum uh, loss in that position? If you buy uh, Apple, yeah, there you go. It's the premium, right? The worst case, Apple is 150 or higher. The puts expire and you lose 13 points, 10 contracts, but it doesn't matter if it's 
do it per share. And then when you're all done, that's $13,000 I could lose, 13 points on 10 contracts that represent 100 shares. So my max gain, my max gain is when Apple goes to zero. You know, and we said that when you buy options, you got to be right about three things. Direction, we're saying down. How far down? I need 13 points down. And I got to be right about the timing. So what I might want to do is lower my out-of-pocket cost. I might want to, conversations not testable, sell the lower strike puts to help me pay for the higher strike puts. I might want to do a put spread test question, identifying a put. So if I'm going to do a spread, what do I got to do? If I'm long a put on the test, I say you're long a put and you want to create a spread, A, B, C, D, what are you going to do to create the spread? You're spreading the difference in the premiums. You're going to do what if you're long a put and you're trying to turn this into a put spread? Indeed, you're going to short the put. So test question number one is, can you identify a spread? So now let's turn it into a spread. And there is now our spread. Wow. Wow. You know, this is proof that uh, Dean makes slides that, uh, Mo, if you could get this uh, spread, you should do it, man because I have 30 points of exposure for only about seven points. The conversation's not testable. What is testable is what are you looking at? Are you looking at a condor, a butterfly, a flamingo, you know, uh, alligator, you know, straddle, spread. You're looking at a spread. That's test question number one. Test question number two, is it debit or credit? So how are we going to determine whether this is a debit or credit spread? How are we going to determine whether this is a debit or a credit spread? We're going to net the premiums. We're going to net the premiums. So is that 13 money out or money in? Is that 13 money out or money in? That is money out. Is that six money out or money in? That is money in. What we're spreading again is the difference in the premiums. Now, by the way, it's kind of a problem if you're on to multiple option strategies, advanced option strategies, and you're struggling that long is money out and short is money in, right? You know, you should know that long is an opening purchase and that's going to be money out. Okay, now ultimately, what's important about netting the premiums, this was your point, Megan, if we can get this number, we know this number is either going to be the gain or the loss depending on whether this is a debit or credit. So this is really key because if we get this right, we can rock and roll. So is this a debit spread? More money out than in, or is this a credit spread? More money in than out. What kind of spread is this? This is a debit spread. So that's test question number two. Test question number one, it's a spread. Test question number two, it's a debit spread. Okay, so do we want these contracts to be exercised? Now, again, even if you didn't memorize, you know, Mountain Dew or just do the do, at some point, if you can look at these uh, option legs, not testable, these are called legs, and say, okay, well, that is an obligation to buy at the strike price. Let's put that smaller font. And this is a choice to sell. And if these get exercised, man, that would sound bueno. That would mean, right, I somebody sticks it to me at 120 and I stick it to the next guy at 150. Huh? Sounds very good. So yeah, I want this thing to exercise. You know, do that after you get the menu done. I'm just illustrating that indeed, exercise is uh, the point. Now, Megan, that would be my max game, by the way, because remember, all the action takes place between the strikes. There's you know, only 30 points there to be made or lost. So do we want to exercise? Yep. Hardest part to get. Don't need to get it. Do you want the difference in the premiums to widen or narrow? Do you want the difference in the premiums to widen or narrow? You want the difference in the premiums to widen and narrow. You want it to widen, get larger. Hardest part to get, don't need to get it. You'll be right 100% of the time. 
right? We did this for a net, by the way, let's put our net there. Let's get our net going. We did this for a net debit of seven. We did, well, we did this for a net debit of seven. So that's our net debit. And uh, yeah, if we can close it out for 10, we make three. So that's what we mean, the difference in the premiums. You know, by the way, it's kind of like, again, that gambling analogy, right? Some people want the difference in the scores, the spread, to be a smaller number. Like the point spread's five, maybe I want three, depending on the bet I made. And other people want it to be outside that spread. Now, your point, Megan, once you have paid money, you remember we said that number is either going to be the profit or the loss in the spread, the max gain or max loss. And once you've uh, paid money, what's the worst case whenever you pay money, whether you buy a call, you buy a put, you buy a spread, you buy a straddle, the worst case is you lose your premium. In this case, seven points or $7,000. And by the way, that's actually better. That's actually better than the losing 13 grand, right? So I've lowered my, my loss from 13 to uh, seven. And then we said the gain and loss test question, what does the gain and the loss equal in, these, uh, in this spread? What does the gain and the loss equal in this spread? Yeah, the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. I mean, that's the whole point of a spread. As I'm saying, I only want to play between 150 and 120, and then I don't want to play no more. So that's our difference in our strikes. All right, so we're at our menu. We said there's eight things we got to be able to do on the test. And we have uh, identified this as a, a spread. We've determined it's a debit spread. Uh, we have determined that we want to have the contracts exercise. Uh, we have determined that we want the difference in the premiums to be larger than seven. We want the difference to be more than seven, like a difference of 10 or 12, that'd be great. The max difference would be 30. So we said the gain and the loss equals the difference in the strikes. I mean, that's the whole point of the spread again, is I'm saying I only want to play between 150 and 120, and then I don't want to play no more. So, you know, there's 30 points of market action here, and then I don't want to play no more. So that would be my floor, not testable. You know, I think of it as floors and ceilings. So there's, you know, 30 points here to be made or lost. And of those 30 points, I spent what to get rolling. Boy, I tell you, this is a hell of a spread. Sometimes I make up spreads that make me want to start trading options again. <laughs> the spread only exists on my, my whiteboard. <laughs> All right. So, Megan, you can either memorize. Ugh. You can either memorize. Uh, Alexa thinks I'm talking to her. Um, you can either memorize the maximum gain in a debit spread is the difference and the strikes 30 less the net debit. Or, Megan, you can say to yourself, self, seven plus something equals 30. Seven plus something equals 30. What is that something? Oh. Right? By the way, if we, we look at this, that's why I told you this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, listen, a lot of you are never going to do options. I get it, right? Some of you are probably just going to be selling mutual funds. If you, you know, if you really want to turn on your manager, just say, hey, I just did my advanced option strategies last night with Dean. And you know, I have a, I'm going to get a seven, but it's okay if I just sell mutual funds. Most of your managers are going to say, that would be wonderful. <laughs> so the vast majority of things you need to be to do can be done uh, with a, uh, you know, with a mutual fund, but you know, you got to kind of think of it as kind of like a barrier to entry. You know, by the way, if you think of it as being fun, if you think of it as being fun, uh, I think it'll make your life easier because you won't be struggling as much. You know, you'll, it's kind of, I, I want you to kind of think of it like a game. You know, if you can, I mean, I get it. It's probably not as fun, but that's you know, part of the test, by the way, is to prove you can play new games. Okay, so we have our gain or loss, and so now we got to do our break even. Are we going to use cal or push for our break even? Are we going to use cal or push for our break even? We're going to use push, and remember what that stands for? Put, subtract from the higher. 
So we're going to take our higher price, our higher strike. Remember, the higher strike put's always going to be dominant because higher strike put contracts always have greater premiums. So that stands for put, subtract from the higher, put, subtract from the higher. By the way, test taking trick, you know that the uh, break even has got to be somewhere between these two numbers. Right? I mean, that's the whole point, right? You can eliminate on your test right now any break even offered to you that isn't somewhere between those two numbers. Right? Because that's the whole point. It's got to lie. So you could toss on the answer set anything that's not between there. So we're going to take our higher strike, which in this case is 150. And this is bueno. I only need uh, what, seven point move? to cover my out-of-pocket cost. I tell you, man, if this was a real spread, I would certainly do this one. So, you know, now instead of needing 13 points of downward volatility, I only need seven. So my break even is 143. And then the last thing we gotta be able to do is determine bullish or bearish. How do we determine bullish or bearish? How do we determine bullish or bearish? Nobody wants to help uh, to put in the chat. Oh, is it me? Did I not roll my chat? How do we determine bullish or bearish? The larger premium dominates the position. So the long put 13 is the dominant leg. You know, does, uh, are any of you guys using the uh, matrix? You know, a lot of ways to do options. Are any of you using my matrix as a way to do options? So Megan, if you're using my option, my matrix, what I like is you can take your matrix and I'm saying to Megan, what box are you playing in? So there's our matrix. And she says, Dean, uh, I'm a 13 on the long put box. And I'm a six on the short put box on the matrix. And so she could say, well, I'm playing in the long put position is the what I'm playing, and this is a bearish position. So if you're using the matrix, you can you kind of plug your premium into the matrix to determine where you're at in terms of what kind of you're doing here. This is a bearish spread. All right, so we've done all eight things here. The eight things you're held accountable for on the test, on a spread, is can you identify the spread? Can you identify the spread? We said a spread is when you're long and short, the same type of contract. We said the next thing you gotta be able to do is determine debit or credit. We said that's huge. You do that by netting the premiums. Because if you get that, then you can rock and roll. We determined this was a debit spread because we got more money out than in. Once we determine it's a debit spread, we can go exercise widen. We'll be right every time. It's a net debit of seven, that's our max loss. We said the gain and loss equals the difference in the strikes. We said you can either memorize that it's the maximum gain a debit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that debit, or you can say seven plus something equals 30, and you can do it that way. By the way, when you get the menu done, then you can think about it. Don't think about it until you get the menu done, but you can think, okay, well, if somebody sticks it to me at 120, and I stick it in the next guy at 150. I'm the put E at 120. I'm the put ER at 150. I make 30 points, less the seven, I make 23. We said the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. The absolute value there. I put pluses or minuses. I didn't need to, but I'm just trying to be more visual with you. There's no graphing on the test. Uh, we do the break even, push, put, subtract from the higher. We got our break even 143. And then the last thing is bullish or bear. So if you get that menu done, whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. All right. So the uh, last thing I got to show you tonight in our advanced options class is straddles. And I think straddles are a little more straightforward. So what we've got to be able to do on a straddle is identify it. Long two different type of contracts or short two different type of contracts. We have to be able to calculate the break evens. Uh, this is the only strategy that has two break evens. It has an upside break even. It has a downside break even. We have to determine where the straddle is profitable. We have a great memory aid device here called Silo. And that stands for short inside, long outside. If it's a short straddle, we want it in between the two numbers. And if it's long, we want it outside of the two numbers. 
And the last thing we got to be able to do on a straddle is when do we use it? You know, it's a straddle because we're straddling the strike price line. So we go long a straddle, we're expecting volatility, but direction's uncertain. And we go short a straddle when we expect a trading range. So, all right, so let's look at a straddle here. So again, uh, we have to be able to identify this. So again, if we're using the matrix, if you're using the matrix, again, I think the matrix can be very helpful. What's going on with my, there's my mouse. My mouse is acting up. Let me get a different mouse. There we go. Okay, so uh, here, if you're using the uh, matrix, you can say, okay, well, in the matrix, I'm straddling the strike price line. So there's our matrix. And a straddle is gonna look like, that's a long straddle. And this is a short straddle. Now, so we have two versions of this. Okay, so we wanna be able to track money in and out. We wanna be able to track money in and out. So is that four points, money out or money in? Uh, that's that's fine, no problem. I'll just uh, just send me an email, uh, deantenny at gmail.com and I'll send you a copy of the recording. So no worries. Um, um, so is the four money out or money in? Is the four money out or money in? Money out. Is the five money out or money in? Is the five money out or money in? It's money out. So I'm gonna be out, so strike price. Let me get my thing here. It's gonna be strike price plus total premium to get my upside break even. That's gonna be my upside break even. We got two. And then the call up put down, right? It's strike price minus total premium is gonna give me my downside break. Even. Again, what we're doing here is we're buying volatility, not testable, but on all the speculative strategies, we're either buying volatility or selling volatility. Okay, so our strike price, what we're straddling is the strike price of 150. So that's what we're straddling is the strike price of 150. So I need 150 plus nine to get my upside break even. So let's put that in here. My upside break is 159. And uh, strike price minus total premium to get my downside break even. That's my downside break even. Let's put that in there. So we got two break evens. Now, again, don't think about it until you get the menu done. So we've identified it as a straddle, we've calculated the break evens. The next thing we got to do is determine where is it profitable. Where is it profitable? Remember silo? Silo means short inside, long outside. So I need Apple to be either above 159 or below 141. You know, I'm buying the volatility here. Yeah, I'm not gonna give up my day job to become a So, you know, 160, I'd make one point, right? I buy it at 150, I sell at 160, that's 10. I spent nine, I make a point. So once I get past that, I start to make money. What I don't want is to have it be in between these two numbers. The worst closing price would be 150. Then I'm going to be a loser. So four test questions about straddles. I think straddles are a little more straightforward on your exam. Can you identify the straddle, long or short, two different type of contracts? This is a long straddle, test question number one. Can you calculate the break evens? Call up, put down, strike price plus total premium, strike price minus total premium, 141, 159. Where is it profitable? Short inside, long outside. This is a long straddle. So we want it above 159 or below 141. When do we use it? We're expecting volatility. You know, I bought a straddle on this company that hired a new CEO. 
And I said, he's either going to fix their problems or they're not. Right. And if he fixes the problems, the stock goes up. He doesn't, the stock goes down. You know, I think there's too much premium in the bed, bath and beyond the stocks only a couple bucks, but you know, there's an example. I'm not going to do it because the option probably is more than the stock. But that being said, either Bed Bath & Beyond is going to fix their problems, <laughs> the stock goes up or they're not, and they're going to go bankrupt, right? All right, so we have long straddles, but we also have short straddles. So here's our short straddle. So again, test question number one, what are you looking at? You're looking at a straddle that's testable. Test question number two, can you calculate the break-evens? So we have to total the premiums. Total, right? So not netting, total. When it's the same thing, buy, buy, or sell, sell, long, long, or short, short, we add. If it's long, short, we net, we subtract. By the way, that's true of like even your, your covered calls and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to get our upside break even, strike price plus total premium. So, you know, that's what we got to do next is get the break evens. So strike price plus total premium gives me my upside break even and strike price minus total premium gives me my downside break even. Uh, again, call up, put down. And so if we take our 150 plus nine, we get our upside break even of 159. And if we take our 150 minus the nine, the combined premiums, 141. And then we said, this is a short straddle. So the third test question is, where is it profitable? Where is it profitable? This is a short straddle. So we want Apple to be in between these two numbers. We want Apple to be in between these two numbers. Ideally, we would like uh, to be uh, 150 at expiration. That would be great. So anywhere in there, we make money. We would be happy. Uh, anybody uh, see a problem potentially with a short straddle? Anybody see a potential problem with a short straddle? Right on, Megan, very testable. You have unlimited loss potential, right? That's very testable to recognize this has unlimited loss potential. You know, once you go past 159, you start to hemorrhage money. You know, you can't go to zero, that's definable, but to go that other way is doing it. So straddles, I think, are pretty straightforward on the test. Can you identify a straddle? Long two different types of contracts, short two different type of contracts. Can you calculate the break-evens? Can you determine where it's profitable? Here's the straddles we just looked at. And please note, it looks like I got a typo on my slide. I got a 150 there, it's 130 instead of 150. But remember, it's the same break-even, it's just where you want it in relationship to that. Let me get clear this here. So our example with the strike that we were straddling is 150. And it's just a matter of where you want it in relationship to the break-evens. We said, if you're long, you want it outside those two numbers. And if you're short, you want it inside those two numbers, short inside, long outside. All right, so it's the same break-evens, long or short. It's just this guy wants it above the, that number or below that. And the short guy wants it in between these two numbers. All right, let's try a uh, practice question. Let's try a practice question. Let me clean up the slide. So here's a practice question on straddles. I said, as I said, they're kind of straightforward. ABC Corp is in litigation. ABC Corp is in litigation over patent infringement. Your customer believes that if ABC prevails in the litigation, AB stock, ABC stock would move much higher. So if I just thought that, I'd buy a call. And if ABC loses in litigation, uh, ABC will move much lower. So if I just thought that, I'd buy a put. He is not sure of which outcome. So he's expecting volatility, but direction is uncertain. What option strategy might you recommend? What option strategy might you recommend? Yeah, very much a test question, a long straddle, right? A long straddle. So. Uh, very much a, a test question on that. Okay, well, I hope you found that helpful. I'm still working on my timing 
because I'm usually teaching these concepts in four day classes and not evening classes. So I still haven't quite got my timing right. I think we're what are we uh, 10 minutes over 530 and I think it was nine minutes. So, so I, that's not bad. I'll probably make it. I made the last one. If you join me for the last one, I now made that a two hour class with a 15 minute break. And I'll probably, you know, book this up so we can spend you now maybe take a little break in between. Um, yeah, I think Tracy, that's a good point. I'm thinking, what do you think? Five or four? I mean, we got East Coast people. I'm all about, I changed our live stream to five. And I think I, I'm more than happy to change these classes, these evening classes to uh, five at least. I would be willing to go earlier than that. I'm just, I want to make sure West Coast people, my thought is that if you're on the West Coast Pacific time zone and you're at work at five, you can stay there and do this or, you know, avoid your commute perhaps. I, so I'm trying to figure out a, a time that works for everybody. But uh, I would definitely uh, have no problems. I'll tell you what, I'll put up a poll uh, in the, um, on, the, on the community page about what would be an ideal start time for uh, afternoon, evening classes. I mean, you know, I'm, we can go afternoon and still be evening on the East Coast. I guess that would be the other thing. I guess I could put up a poll like, where are you watching from? <laughs> you know? So anything else uh, before we call it a night? Well, thanks for participating. Next week's class is uh, Muni Bonds. And remember, you guys get free repeats. As soon as we get done tonight, I'll put up another one of this, these classes. And, uh, you know, I might reverse it and do straddles the next time first. So we have more time and then spreads. We get free repeats as uh, on the basic option class. If there's another one already up, there'll be another one of these. You get free repeats. And you also remember, have no cap in terms of classes that are sold out. We had uh, basic options. We had our cap. And we have a cap on the free office hour. You also are entitled, and that's up as well, to uh, free office hours. And uh, that's capped at five. And there's two office hours up already. Uh, one might not show up because it's uh, tomorrow. But you're also welcome to join us for the free office hour. And uh, basically, we just you know ask what people want to talk about. So anything else? OK, everybody, I hope to see you in Muni Bonds. Hope to see you in a live stream. Hope to see you uh, sometime in the near future. If not, I'll see you on the channel and remember to reach out. And uh, if you have any problems, I'm more than happy to help you with anything. Uh, if you're using Kaplan, you can just give me the QID number. But if you're using PassPerfect or SDC, I'll still help you. But you just need to cut and paste the, the thing so I can see what you're looking at. All right, everybody. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch, yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard. Bye-bye. <laughs>